That's right, I have bought another Seamaster. Shouldn't be such a shock to anybody out there because I have repeated myself with Seamasters five times. Hi guys and welcome to the show and today I'm talking about my brand new Seamaster and I did make a video about where they've gone wrong with the watch last year when I saw my black dial version and I had to watch that back just to see how critical I was and I don't think I was that critical about the watch and the things that annoyed me then still annoy me now. I still think the clasp is too big, I still think the bracelet is, is too thick and I still think it should taper, uh, I still think it should have stayed at 41 mil. But they are fucking very beautiful watches. There is no denying that. And I said that at the time in the video that it's my most beautiful looking watch. And when you get hands on with any Seamaster, whatever color version you're going for, they are stunning watches. And let's face it, it's the second best dive watch in the world. There is no qualms about that. You might argue it's the first, but ultimately, if you've got a Submariner in your hand and a Seamaster in the hand, that refinement, I think, is the difference. Build quality, looks, prestige. The, the, they're pretty much neck and neck, aren't they? But there's a few things that the Submariner are a little bit better at, and it has been around for a hell of a lot longer. So that's the best dive watch. I couldn't afford one of them. They're almost every man and his dog's got one to a certain degree. I can understand why it's, it's still for me the best dive watch. If I could afford one, I probably would have bought one. What's the next best, op best option? I'm buying a Seamaster. But I didn't think like that at first. What I thought is I want to try a different brand, maybe a Zenith. Maybe even a Hublot, I fancied them at the time. Uh, loads of different brands I was looking at, loads of different options I was trying to go for. Something a little bit different, so I didn't repeat myself constantly. But ultimately, I came back to something that, I, you know, the Seamaster is a freaking beautiful looking watch. The, the wave dial has grown on me. You know, the, that little bit of polishing in certain areas, the twisted lugs. It's, a, it's an iconic watch. And I've got all the Zealand rubber straps, all the different colours that I want to utilise a little bit more. And they fit perfectly on the Seamaster. So I thought, yeah, I'm going to go for it. Now, which style did I go for? In the previous generation, I've had two blue and one black. And in the new generation, I had the all black dial last summer. And that's a really, really good looking watch. What are the other options? So blue is actually my favorite color. And I was saying to the wife, I don't have a blue dial watch. I've got the uh, two-tone Datejust. I've got the Globemaster with a silvery white dial. I've got the Oyster Perpetual 39 in the grape dial, purpley dial. What else have I got? A lot of black dials in the in the collection. So I wanted something to stand out. I wanted a summer watch because we're going on holiday soon, which is pathetic, but I did. Uh, but with a Seamaster, it's an all day, every day, all year round watch. It's going to go well. The blue was a really strong contender. It's blue, the ocean, summer air stands out. It's a classic color. Uh, the blue bezel with the grey dial again, something a little bit unique, something a little bit different. And then you've got the white dial with the, the black ceramic, I think it is. So I didn't buy the black dial because I've had it before. I did want to go a different route. And I think the silver dial is, it's just not for me. I, I don't get it, to be honest. I think it's the, the least attractive of the, the combinations. Uh, so it's the blue dial or the white dial. Now to put in perspective, on my birthday in 2019, my wife bought me this NATO strap and it's black and white. <laughs> uh, so that is a birthday present I've treasured and I've tried to utilize as much as possible. It doesn't particularly go well on the Globemaster. So I'm not giving much away here by saying that I bought the white dial Seamaster. And oh la la, what a good looking watch. Absolutely fantastic. All, all the things I remember that's good about the Seamaster, they're still there, obviously, in abundance. And all the things that I don't like about it are there, but they don't piss me off as much as they once did. So I've been wearing it non-stop for a few days now and there is a couple of small niggles, but I don't think that's to do with the watch. Well, it is to do with the watch and it's the bracelet. And I'll show you now that it's stiff. If it was a Rolex and it was stiff, it'd be classed as Rolex tolerances. So maybe it's just Amiga tolerances. But yeah, when I took the links out, I just think oh, it needs to be a little bit looser. But to be honest, when it's on the wrist, I don't notice it. But as I say... I've evolved as a, a watch enthusiast where the little niggles would once freak me out and make me want to not wear it or sell the watch. Now, I'm not that bothered about it. I'll just wear it and get on with it. So the, the thicker bracelet is still there. It's still a thick bracelet, but it's a really good looking bracelet. Uh, but I have got here 
the NATO strap and the Zealand black rubber strap, which are just going to look absolutely perfect on holiday. So the rubber strap, obviously, on the beach, messing around, doing whatever you're going to do on holiday, drinking beer mainly. Uh, that's going to look the business. The NATO, I'll be able to swap out and change for nighttime, maybe. And the bracelet, I'm going to try and keep it good. I'm trying going to get my wear out of it. I am a bracelet guy, ultimately. But yeah, I have got some cracking watches, but some of them have got to go because I've got too many watches. I'm going to sell some, break it down to three or four in a core collection, and I think I'm going to be good to go. Keeping my Rolexes, obviously. And then I'm going to keep my Globemaster, so two Rolex, two Amiga, sell the rest, job done. Right, guys, let me know if you think I've made the right decision with this Seamaster. I think it's probably the best looking watch out of a lot of them. It doesn't glisten and, and gl uh, glare and catch your eye quite as much as the black dial, but that's because it's the, the white, poreless, matte dial. But it's just so eye-catching on its own anyway. So, yeah, I think I've made a great choice. The wife's right behind my decision-making, which is always easier to stomach. And I've bought my fifth Seamaster. Let me know what you think, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.